J.T. Crowley is Talking Books. On this show, you'll hear from emerging talent and seasoned veterans from around the world. Hello, everyone. I'm J.T. Crowley, and I'm delighted to bring you all another successful new author, Simone Rini Quintum, from New South Wales in Australia. Her book, The Golden Book of Life and the Plasma Soul Codes, is without doubt unique, both in terms of contents and how that content is structured. It's a book that embraces spirituality, mental and physical well-being through a series of 33 plasma soul codes, which take a person on a journey, a journey to search for their inner soul, to bring about a balanced, happier and energetic lifestyle for those who care to search for their inner selves. For me, the best way to read this epic book is to break it down into bite sizes. Because within the book, each of the 33 plasma cell codes are talked about in individual self-help, self-guidance chapters. So when you look at the book, so the first soul plasma soul code starts in chapter nine. And that is when you can have a look at it. And what I say to everybody is, when you've read that one, is then for the next week, is then go and have a look at chapter 10, which is Plasma Soul 2, and so forth, until you get right to chapter 41, where that is the 33rd Plasma Soul Code. So for me, this is a book not to be put on a shelf. It's a book for you to reference every single week. Take it down every week off the shelf. Look at the plasma code for that week. See what Simone is talking about and go and explore all the theories as to how she's come to put this self-help guidance lesson for that week together. So I'm going to stop chattering on here, everybody, because we really need to bring Simone on to chat about her book and get to the very core of why she's written it. Simone Rini Quinton, come and join me on my show. Thank you for having me, John. It's great to be here. I'm very excited to share more about my book with the listeners. And as you can tell everybody, um, Simone has an Australian accent and she lives in a small little town called Brulee on a small beach town in New South Wales with her husband Rodney, two children, Kezi and Reef, and Bluey the Budgie. Now, we can't not mention Bluey the Budgie, everybody, because he is one of the kids. <laughs> <laughs> he is. <laughs> so, Simone, let's, you know, let's get to the core of your book and why you're here. You describe your book as a kind of self-help book for those looking to search for their inner spirit. You have a mission, you say, to help guide and motivate humankind home to real love. And this is all based around your 33 plasma soul codes. Where do your theories evolve from, your philosophical thoughts and views about life? But what I see and understand is that you're dealing with the inner soul of a person's very essence to bring about a more balanced approach to their spiritual, physical, and mental well-being. Am I right? Am I on the right track here? You are spot on, John, and your introduction has been amazing. You've really grasped what I'm trying to do, so I'm very grateful for that. These, everything that came to me that is written in the book and it, it does, it comes from within. It's come from those times when I've been outside in nature and I've been with beautiful clients and even with my children and those moments where you step back and you are very silent inside yourself and you feel it in your heart and from there all this information just poured out. It really poured out of me and it's something that I've been in tune with since I was a little girl I would always have extreme empathy and would see colors and shapes and patterns around people and just felt like 
people's souls were talking to me through my own soul. So that's where all the information has come from. Somewhere deep inside my own heart and soul where the human mind boggles. But, it, but I believe that humanity are evolving and I know that I've evolved throughout my lifetime and more of this information just, it seems to just be there inside me, inside my heart and soul. That's the best way I can describe it. Fair it becomes enough. emotional. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because this book has taken you five years to write, hasn't it? Yes, it has. And I started taking notes many years before that when I was about 21. Uh, And then I accumulated, uh, I had about 2,000 pages of notes when I sat down to properly write the book Mm. and structure it. Yeah. There you go. A very long time. I did have to, you know, I had children and had to work in between. <laughs> oh, these little things get in the way, don't they? <laughs> yeah. That's yes. the let's let's open up this epic book of yours um, to get at the core of what you have to say. So let's head to chapters two uh, to eight. So that's chapters two to eight, everybody. Now, chapter two, you head up. What are the plasma soul codes? Hmm, I thought, what are they? You say they are energetic, make up of spirit, real as the sky, the web of eternal spirit, intrinsic and precise as fluid. They're conduit, open humans to the wow factor of life, integral to life, plus many, many more glowing attributes. What are these codes, Simone? (laughs) Oh, my goodness. That's the whole book answers that. (laughs) The codes are, in essence, the emotional intelligence that we have within ourselves, within our souls. It's the connections that we have to all that is life, the entire universe, to other humans. They help, it helps us to connect and talk to people and connect with nature and see colours and lights. So it is the very essence of who we are. The soul codes are that, the essence of who, who we are. And that's where they've come from. And it's something that is very tricky to put down in a book. But I did my best to make it as grounded as I could to to explore these emotions, these extreme emotions and this spiritual intelligence that I have felt within me my whole life and that I have felt through through other experiences with other people. So that is what they are. They are, in essence, the pod of who, the pod of us that all that contains all that is life and our communication systems with life. So do you believe that the soul is like the inner spirit within each person? Yes. Yes. Hmm. It is the part of us that has no beginning and no end. It is the part of us that continually evolves and learns. And I believe that when we're here in a human body, we are somewhat restricted with that. And so I designed the soul codes to help people feel more freedom, more love and more life within them, especially at times that are challenging, which we have many challenging times most days as human beings. Oh, we do. I mean, like the spirit of a person is the difference between a person being alive and being dead, isn't it? That's right. Yeah. That's right. I'm glad we agree on that one. There you go, everyone. <laughs> Simone, let's head to chapter three which you head up collective soul forward. You have four points as the key sector here. They are, we are all one. Listen carefully to your heart. The reason you are here may seem hidden. And just because you think you can't doesn't mean you can't. (laughs) What's the message you're getting across here? The message I was trying to get across with this section probably all comes back to the point one, that is we are all one. I was trying to get people out of their heads, out of their human heads that is um, wants to sort everything out and compute everything because I believe that if we could get out of that headspace and not be so 
structured in our thoughts and you just contemplate and feel that everything is one, it would help them connect with their soul a little bit more. It's bringing them back to the basis that we are all one. We all, in essence, are connected energetically. Even science understands that concept now, which is wonderful. And, yeah, that's it's. it was to bring everyone back to that, the basics, the basics that if you feel that we're all one and you listen to your heart, then everything's going to be okay. So when they get to a point in the book and they start getting in their head and, and worried about things, they can go back to that basics that it's okay, I'm connected, I'm part of everything. I, I believe that human beings stress out a lot and a lot of our issues happen because we feel that we're separate. When we can feel alone, we a lot of our personality traits arise because of that so if we can feel that we are connected we're part of this universe it's okay we're here and if I can bring them back to their hearts they will be okay that's a fascinating theory Hmm. (laughs) see we're talking to a very intelligent woman here everybody and when you look at her life I I just don't know how she's fitted everything in with all that she's done. And you need to um, have a look at her webpage, everybody, and also have a look at the written introduction. And you'll start to see, whoo, this is one sunny, bright, cheerful, happy person who's packed so much into her life and even had the opportunity to bring up two children fantastically. Let's go now to um, the rest of the, what I call the introduction in this book, chapters four to 18. Now, we're not going to go into every single chapter, everybody, because we'll be here for eternity. It's a big book. <laughs> but let's go to this area of chapters four to 18. You talk about a matrix of kingdoms of life and nine categorized within the matrix. You talk about self-navigation systems how to use the codes, artistic symbols, collective soul, measures, movements, feelings, messages, animals. This is a lot for the reader to get their teeth into. No doubt you will argue with me that these topics in this early part of the book make up the bedrock to what's in the book. And that's you probably felt that you needed to do this at this pivotal point in the book just to get the basics across. Am I right with that argument point that you had to do this to get the basics across before you launch into the self-help guidance section? Yes, I really did. And the reason I have so many different categories is because we all learn in different ways. Many people, I know a lot of my friends and family, they're real animal people. And I have other clients that relate to flowers or poetry, and that's how they get their information. They're more emotionally based. And then I've got people that like the breathing or the movement. And there's there's just so many different ways we learn and grow. And I believe that um, I know women especially, um, <laughs> depending on what mood we're in, we're going to want a little different slice of information to learn for that day remembering that these soul codes are there as a a self-help guide something that we can look at as you said at the beginning of the week and work through so I, I wanted to explain all these little points and what was in the book so that people understood that they didn't have to drink it all in in one go they could just go to okay I just want to know what the purpose is of this soul code or what is the message here what is what is my soul trying to tell me here or if if they're like me sometimes I like the reference which I know that we might go into a little bit later I like to just go okay this soul code is going to help me with anxiety or fear okay I'm not if I'm feeling a little bit anxious in that day so all of those points were to prepare the reader that they knew that when they get to the actual self-help guide of the book, that they have all these little different gifts that they could go into whenever they needed to. 
but I wanted to tell people that they don't need to do it all in one go. They just can take little bites and chew and digest throughout the day. The book has not been written to be um, to be read all in one go, as far as oh, I can okay. Definitely has not. It it was written as it is a soul bible. It was when I when my mum when I first gave it to my mum, she was laughing and laughing and laughing. And she said, oh, my goodness, this is, you have written a Bible. It is a spiritual Bible. And and my mother um, still, I was over there the other day and she always has it sitting on her coffee table and she's she's really starting to get into it and understand that it's just those little bits and they're really helping her, which is, and I talk about my mum. Your mum's always your, your biggest fan. Um, but uh, my mum's, mother, all, mum's always mum. Yeah, but mum's mum, yeah. Mm. And and for me, having written the book and I know that it's sitting there and, and my mum is getting those little bits and it's helping her, however small or big throughout her day, just makes my heart smile. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, Especially. At the moment, let's go to, you know, the book is, as I said, for me, it's in three parts, but you will not see it's headed up part one, part two, part three, everybody. I make that very, very clear. This is just my vision of the book. Um, so for me, this is going to the second part of the book. And this is the self-guide section. And this is chapters nine to 41, everybody. And this is where the 33 plasma soul codes come to light. And this is where Simone has dedicated a chapter to each soul, plasma soul code. So now we can get, you know, let's go into some of the soul codes because there's 33, everybody. To read all 33 out, we'll still be here next year. <laughs> and if you want to know what all the 33 plasma soul codes are about, then go and read the book. <laughs> I can't be blunter than that. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing like a marketing hint. Read the book. Yes, there you go. So, yes, read the book. <laughs> absolutely, yes. Let's go to, uh, let's take the listeners and the viewers, Simone, to chapter 17. This is all about Plasma Soul Code 9, Free Will. You say, embrace your free will to manifest your heart's desire. What's this plasma soul code all about? What are you getting at here? Oh, free will, that we all are in charge of our life. We have the freedom to choose. We have the freedom to choose what we're thinking, whether we're going to step on our left foot or our right foot, if we're going to go forwards or backwards, we get to choose if we're going to sit on that lounge and wallow for, for weeks on end about something that happened five years ago. We have a choice. We have free will. And it's a very solid, very direct. Uh, and I give people in this this, this thought or feeling. Every, every soul code has a thought or a feeling um, I know a lot of spiritual people, they know they call that an affirmation or you could call it a mantra that you want to repeat over and over throughout your day. And in free will, it says, I will my truth into action. I am free to be me. I don't think you get much simpler than that, that people then get out of these little programmed thoughts, negative mindsets, and they go, hang on, hang on a moment. I am free to be me. So the whole code is set around that, around encouraging people, motivating people, giving them tools, spiritual information, poetry even, reference points to help them understand that they are allowed to be who they are. And I think that is a very important thing. We all need to give ourselves permission to be who we are because who we all truly are deep in our hearts, we're amazing. <laughs> unique and oh, needed. absolutely um you know i've got to know you over the last couple of weeks and i've picked up that you're not a negative person you're a very sunny positive person but let's go to uh, move on a little bit further here everybody you know simone throughout all of these chapters talking about the plasma salt codes you've used a standardized formula but with different variations under the subheadings was that done purposefully 
uh, so that each self-guidance lesson follows a set pattern with a change in topical discussion? Yes, it was done very purposefully. I wanted to have, even though I'm very spiritual and a very emotional, creative type of person, I'm also very structured. I um, I have a, I was very, very good at mathematics at school. I have a very um, organised life and I believe that we need to be organised. So I wanted the book to be organised and to have a set pattern to make it easy, easier because the subject is so massive. I mean, we're talking about life. We're talking about the soul. We're talking about our connection to all that is life plants, animals, minerals, the earth. We're talking about the complexities of our thoughts and our emotions. And so I needed something that was very grounded and structured and easy. And I know for a fact, after having uh, dealt with so many clients for so many years, that people do need to have particular points that help them. I know that in my last 30 years of, of helping clients, it's usually just one thing I've said or maybe given them a breathing exercise or a movement that they've done that has really stayed with them. Even years later, I get people saying, oh, I remember you said this to me 10 years ago. I still think about that every week. Um, <laughs> but I can't remember where I put the coffee yesterday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's why. Yeah. Yeah, so I was like, like, what are all these little things that I have? helped people with in the last you know, 25, 30 years. And I wanted to put all of those things in there. To a structured formula. That's great. Formula. Simone, mm -hmm. let's move on now. Let's go to chapter 28, Soul Code 20, Repair. You, you start off here where they're saying, feel your energies repair. Thin, sorry, then flow forward, perfectly repaired. Talk to us about this code, but what I found fascinating in this self-help chapter was the reference section. And we've already, you've already touched on this. Here you list such things as frigidity, rape, abuse, sexual abuse, emotional intelligence, spiritual, emotional body, as well as lots of other areas. Why this section? <laughs> this section is probably the most important section that because I wanted the book to be very easy for people and if they were going through something or if they had a client or a friend or family member that was going through something that they could pick that book up that is designed to be there for them week, week on end and go to the back of the book to the reference point and then it would take them to that particular code. So all of those references at the end of every soul code uh, just relate back to the very end of the book so that they can look up a keyword, whether it be frigidity or sexual abuse, and it would take them to that particular soul code that was going to help them through that trauma. I think that's brilliant. I, I didn't work that out, so I've just learned something there. Hmm. <laughs> and, and, and also, yeah. and sorry, quickly, and and, and also, uh, I believe that we learn a lot by just reading key words. I know I do. Um, even myself, I use this book for myself because when I wrote it, I was in my in a, a very pure state of being but I still have children and I run businesses so every now and then I need a bit of help so I, I've been using the book all the time and I find the reference point very very helpful sometimes I just flick open the book and and I know what soul code I want and I read the references and I'm like oh my goodness that 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 and that that's all happening to me at the moment that's a bit of a pattern that's happening with me in my week so I really need this soul code there you go Let's yeah. go to chapter yeah. 41, Simone. Plasma Soul Code 33, Spirit Child. Now, you kickstart this chapter off with saying, I am your great spirit, your eternal child, your key to living. And you go on to say, awaken your happy spirit child from within. What are you getting at with this Plasma Soul Code? <laughs> I'm getting Laughing, at everyone. <laughs> 
because the bottom line of being here in this world and in in life is to find that innocence and joy and that is something that is inside all of us it's in our soul the the soul essence of who we are is very very pure and innocent just very childlike um, I know from all of my experiences when I have communicated with lost with loved ones that have crossed over on the other side or I've had quite spiritual encounters the whole energy and the, the essence is very joyful and loving and childlike very playful so much love and joy spiritually and then we come into this human world into our human body and everything we can get quite serious and quite heavy so this chapter is to remind us all that in essence in the purity inside us in our heart there is so much joy and happiness and how much fun is it if we can bring a little bit more of that into our adult lives you know, I, I think that's a wonderful saying. And when I look behind you, you've got a sign on your wall that says, heal all humanity. Wow. <laughs> I, I made that with my children when they were young. My husband and I love Great Keppel Island. It's where we want to retire to one day. And it's the island we met on. We used to work there. <laughs> and we took the kids there for a whole month. And we this the driftwood washed up on the beach and the shells and a bit of broken glass. And we made that sign together. That's great. It was a very special time. It was the beginning of when I started taking very serious notes about the, for the book. So it's there as a, as, as a reminder and also a reminder for me in my heart of why I've written the book and why I do the work I do is because I believe that all humanity has the power to heal and I want to help them heal. Absolutely. <laughs> Exactly. Let's go to what I classify as part three of the book. As I said, you won't see it headed at part one or two or three, everybody. But for me, this was the third part of the book. Um, these are the last four chapters within the book. So, you know, you've got chapters 42, 43, you cover off, you cover off general codes. And then chapters 44 and 45, they're mainly around, you know, the reference points again. Why did you choose to finish your book in this fashion? Uh, well, I believe everything needs to have a little finishing cap on it, but the main reason was to cross-reference the whole book. So people could go to these chapters in the back of the book and pick up a key word that would direct them back to that particular soul code that they needed. So that was the main reason I did it. Um, also just a little bit of a recap. On, on the whole book. I say, I like, you know, when I used to work, you know, we used to always summarise at the end and only have a recap just to get the message yeah, across really. to people, yeah. yeah. And so Maybe the recap message like here is, people, if you want to understand what these plasma soul codes are, go and buy the book. <laughs> um, <laughs> what's next for you, Simone, both in terms of your own life and that of your writing? Are there any books in the pipeline? There are a number Ooh. of books in the pipeline. Uh, I did want to do some more on the soul codes. So because there, there's so many, I wanted to make it a little bit easier for people and, and do a bit of a spin off on that. But the book that's been coming to me a lot lately that I've been starting to, to have a little dabble with is a book that um, is... <laughs> It's probably more the target audience would more be the uh, the the real male male and or people that are very laid back um, and oh, I, I call them the Aussie males or the tradies over here. They're the they're the blokes like my husband. He um, loves the hardened his, Aussies. We say yeah, the hardened <laughs> Aussies just here yeah. and and I wanted to call it uh, something like beers farts and spirituality hmm that's a little bit well different. watch out for that one everyone <laughs> <laughs> it was a bit of a fun one to do for, for the Aussie male. good luck on that one <laughs> who do you see simone as your market for your book your books but more importantly who would you like to see read in your book young people mature folk or people of all ages I would really love people of all ages to have a go at this book. Including um, me? Obviously, yes. 
people of all ages. Uh, primarily, I believe that the book is really targeted for people that are wanting to search a little bit deeper into themselves. And for teachers, uh, parents that have children that are very, very sensitive, uh, even people that are in other healers and practitioners, because of the other points in the book, I've got a, a section in there called One on One in Every Soul Code that helps practitioners to, to help other people. Um, but really the soul searchers, people that are looking for more, that are, okay. that are ready. Yeah. Where can people get your book from? They can get the book on, well, if they just Google my name, Simone Renee Quinton, or they Google the Golden Book of Life and the Plasma Soul Codes, it'll come up in many places, but they can get it on Amazon or through Balboa Press, which is my publishers. And, um, yeah, it's on. it's also on other places, Booktopia, and on my personal website, if they live within Australia, they can get a signed copy, which is soulnavigationsystem.net. Okay. Everyone, if you look at my written introduction, you'll see where all the links where you can go and get a book from, everybody. <laughs> Simone, Rini, Quinton, thank you very much for coming on my show today. Thank you for having me, John. It was a pleasure. You're very welcome. Simone Quinton, everybody. Well, I hope you found that fascinating. I certainly did. But as I end all my podcasts, I'm JT Crowley. Thanks for listening, watching, wherever you are in the world. So until next time, stay safe.